Hi, this is Professor Cummings, and I have another problem that I wanted to work on for the class. Um, <clears throat> this basically this is a, one of the homework assignments, and I wanted to go through it just to give some clarity to it. Okay, so what you can see here is you've got a shaft here with a lot of information being applied. So you got a, a copper shaft, and it's subjected to axial loads shown. All right, so you can see all the arrows representing the loads determine the displacement of A with respect to D, you know, point A here, D here, and B and C are in the middle. If the diameters of each segment are 0.75 inches for diameter from A to B, one inch for diameter of B to C, and 0.5 inches, half an inch from C to D. And since it's copper, Young's modulus is 18 times 10 to the third KSI, or 18 times 10 to the sixth PSI. So this is the problem we have. And there's another thing I want you to notice that this picture that we're looking at, we're working from, is effectively a free body diagram. You don't see any support reactions. We could actually uh, imagine if we had a wall mounted here um, at A, that this could be a support reaction. But for all intents and purposes, they gave us this picture with no real support reactions on it. And that should be fine. That, should, that shouldn't that should bother our equations. It's just that unlike most of the others, you know, we had to find a support reaction first, which would get us to this particular point. So let's go ahead and set the problem up and see how we're going to approach it. But at the end of the day, like I said, you know, they're asking us, you know, displacement of N A with respect to B. So how much does A move compared to B and in which direction? And in which direction? All right. All right. So there we got our original picture. So we can go ahead and set it up. See, what are we given? Just consolidate that. We've got a copper shaft. We have the Young's modulus of 18 times 10 to the third KSI. We have segment AB, which is 0.75 inches in diameter and 80 inches in length. BC, which is one inch in diameter and 150 inches in length. And CD, which is half an inch in diameter and 100 inches in length. And we're being asked to find the displacement of A with respect to D. So again, you know, the displacement for axial loading is just you know, the linear deformation. Now, what concepts are we going to do? What are the, what's the logic we're going to have to use here? Well, you know, some of these things are kind of standard. Obviously, we're going to use the deformation equation, but there's a few other more basic ones we're going to have to look at. You know, are you going to utilize one is that this is in static equilibrium, and we're going to have to utilize this as, as though everything is in static equilibrium. So the sum of the forces are going to equal zero. There's no net force. We're also going to have to utilize method of sections and you'll see how that's getting utilized. And of course, you know, our uh, deformation, our displacement equation. Now, again, you can see this is already in static equilibrium. If you look at, let me change out this pen I give this to a pen. You can see that the loads, if you look at the direction and the magnitude of each one of these loads, you've only got two loads going to the right, and that is 8 and 6 going to the right, so that's 14. And going to the left, you've got four loads, 2 at 2 KIP, so that's 4, and 10, a KIP 2 at 5. And so it's 14 going positive and 14 going negative. So this is in static equilibrium as it stands. All right. So like I said, this can be almost treated as a free body diagram. But one big important thing here is that these directions of these loads are going to have a major impact as what's going on internally into the bar. And that's what's going to impact what's going on with the displacement of A with respect to D. You know, so this is a, a perfect example of just because something's in static equilibrium, it can be deformed. 
So since the, you know, the direction of those loads are going to be so important, we will need a coordinate system. You know, so going to the right is positive. And I just went ahead and made a free body diagram just as standard practice of making one. Now, we also know we are going to use this linear deformation equation. And we're also going to have, in order to find out what's, you know, the different components of that equation, we're going to need a few things such as, let's see if I put my cursor, there we go. Here, I'll put these in red. So we don't know these internal loads. We're going to need to use the method of sections to find that. And we don't know the cross-sectional areas yet. That's a simple calculation because we do have the related diameters. We have the lengths. And since we have nothing but you know one material, we know Young's modulus. So we're going to have to go ahead and find these cross-sectional areas and these internal loads. And to find them, since it's a, a round bar, we're going to use this equation here. The cross-sectional area at each section is going to be pi over 4 times the diameter squared. And I just went ahead and put this into a table. So if we look at each one of these, you know, I just broke the segments A, B, B, C, C, D. And I put all their crucial information in here so that we can, you know, get these things all consolidated in one place. Here are our given lengths for each segment. Here are given diameters for each segment and our cross-sectional areas for each one of the segments. So you can work this out on your own and you don't know, see that this is it. I didn't want to go you know, spend a lot of time working on that, that equation since it is just you're calculating the, the diameter of a circle. So now, now that we got those basics, let's go ahead and, and get this back together. So we got one thing that we still need to do or a couple of things, but one major part before we can use that equation. So we know that the shaft is in static equilibrium, you know, as it is, we you know that it's you know, a net force of zero. And since the sum of the applied loads is equal to zero, and we're taking all these as applied loads, however, the internal loads for each shaft will cause the deformation. In other words, we don't know what's going on in each one of these sections, whether they're in tension or in compression, and that's what we're going to have to find out. So what we're going to use is, is the method of sections to find those internal forces. You know, so we'll be able to see whether or not this force is going in the positive or negative direction. You know, you know, we should give it a net compression or a net tension. And that's going to tell us what's happening when we take A respect, with respect to D. So let's go ahead and move into that. So. So we got our problem basically set up here and we're just going to look at it one section at a time using method of sections. So we've got A to B. So we got our eight kip load being applied in the positive direction. And if we take the method of sections, we know there's going to be an equal and opposite going in the opposite direction here and internally of AB. So it's the normal force of AB. So since it's in static equilibrium, sum of forces is equal to zero. We got eight kip plus the internal load NAB, and we have NAB is equal to eight kip. And you know it is in the negative direction, so it is you know, putting this into compression. So now we can just simply move on to the next section here. What's going on in BC? What the normal load is there? And so well, I'm, I'm basically, you know, I know which direction is just because the math is so easy, but you know, I'm just making the assumption that it's positive. And also you got 8 kip, and now you got 5 kip plus 5 kip going in the opposite direction. So again, it's static equilibrium. Sum of forces is equal to zero. So we got 8 chi p going into the positive direction minus the two uh, 5 chi p going into the opposite plus the internal load of segment BC. So you end up with a net of 
10, or excuse me, the internal of BC is equal to 10 minus the 8KIP, which shows that it is 2KIP internally in this, in this segment. So what we're having is going in the opposite direction. So this is also going into, or not also, but is going in tension. All right. So now we've got the last segment of CD. So we're going to look at method of sections. But instead of starting from left to right, I'm going to just take a simpler one and go from right to left. I think what's going on within that section. All right, so we got an internal load going in the opposite direction, equal and opposite to what's going on with this applied load. Again, it's static equilibrium. Sum of forces equal to zero, and I have in a, a, the normal load of CD is equal to a negative six kip. So equal and opposite. Now that's negative, but you also notice that it is pushing in the opposite direction or pulling in the opposite direction. So this still is in tension. You know, it's, it is in a, a tension state right there. All right, so we've calculated, you know, all, all of our crucial information. So now the deformation can get calculated. We know the internal loads. We just calculate all of our internal loads. We know our cross-sectional areas. And now we're going to use something called superposition, you know, to figure out what's going on in the individual section as we start looking at what their, each one of their deformations are. So that is, you know, so if you don't remember superposition, you know, I have a video on that one. And basically it's just the algebraic sum of each one of the segments. So what we're going to look at as we go from A to D, N to N, is the deformation going on in AB, the deformation going on in segment BC, and the deformation going on in CD. Add those together, you know, tension and compression, and we should have a net resultant for A to D. So let's go ahead and set that up, back to our original problem. Alrighty, so if we just start with AB, what we have is our load, our length of 80, our cross-sectional area, and the Young's modulus. And that gives us a compression, you know, this our displacement is a compression of 0 0.080 inches. All right, so if we look at BC, start with the same equation, Now we've got this one, our internal load was 2 KIP, 150 inches, cross-sectional area of 0.785 inches squared, same Young's modulus. Deformation of 0 0.021 inches. And for CD, that one's also in tension. So it is 6 KIP, 100 uh, inches, 0 0.02 inches squared, and the same cross it, or Young's modulus. And that gets us 0 0.0, excuse me, 0 0.170 inches. Now, keep in mind, this is positive because it's in tension. It is actually stretching the rod. If you want to think, you know, tension adds, compression subtracts. All right, so now we've got our displacements. So now it's time for superposition. So if we just look at what's going on in each segment, and we're trying to figure out what is going on from A to D, N to N. So it's the algebraic sum. So negative a compression of 0 0.080 inches plus 0 0.020 inches, plus 0 0.171 inches, and we end up with a deformation from A to D of 0 0.111 inches. So this is Professor Cummings. Hopefully this was helpful to you. Uh, go ahead and hit the like button 
you know, go ahead and subscribe and probably more important, go ahead and, and share this video if you think that it might be helpful to somebody else trying you know, to help people out. I guess this, you know, while they're taking this class, one of those things that hopefully it'll walk through it a little slower for them or in a way that, that people can be a little more understandable. That's their learning style. So again, go ahead and, uh, and if you don't like it, hit the dislike button and, you know, do me a favor and comment and say why you didn't like it. <laughs> I'll go ahead and I'll, I'll talk to you later. And thanks for watching.